Yeah, we're putting this to use in the real world. Yeah. So that, that truck's clocking it at 82. That, that's weighing 82,000 pounds. And when you see that pass shot again, you'll notice, you'll notice that speedometer is climbing. You know, we're going 6% and accelerating up that grade. Some people out there say it can't be done. Um, I don't know who might say that, but uh, <laughs> I've heard rumors. So we just did it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Je to oficiální, dámy a pánové, Tesla doručila první Tesla Semi. Něco, o čem většina říkala, že je nemožné udělat. A i přesto Tesla včera představila, že to jde. Je to velmi důležitý moment v historii pro Teslu, především z pohledu její mise. Předtím, než se do toho plně ponoříme, jestli ještě neodebíráte, udělejte to teď. All right, welcome to Sparks Nevada, uh, set of the Tesla Gigafactory and our Tesla Semi Truck uh, Factory as well. So, uh, yeah, I can't believe it's been five years. People might wonder why I build a semi truck. Because um, if you look at the actual unit volume, it's it's small compared to passenger vehicles. So, for passenger vehicles, you know, there's on the order of uh, almost a hundred million that are sold every year, and whereas uh, tr- yeah, semi trucks, it's uh, like. Yeah, for four or five hundred thousand. Not even yeah, It's a couple hundred thousand class A trucks a year. Globally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or no, no, no. Sorry, that's U.S. US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah the, so the, in the U.S. is, is called it like fifteen million passenger vehicles and a couple hundred thousand semi trucks. So it seems like a small percentage, but uh, it's actually twenty percent of U.S. vehicle emissions because you, you've got a huge vehicle and it's being driven uh, all the time. So when you factor in the, the number of hours driven and the, the weight that it's carrying, it's actually, although it's only 1% of vehicle production, it's 20% of vehicle emissions. Uh, and it's uh, over a third of, of all the particulate emissions. So from a sort of health standpoint, particularly in like cities, this is a huge uh, impact, like gigantic. Vždy mě strašně motivuje slyšet, že Tesla dělá věci z motivace mise, aby zlepšili tento svět, aby urychlili přechod na obnovitelnou energii a nejde jim pouze o nějaký zisk a o to udělat nějaký falešný produkt, který by byli schopni marketingově dostat k milionům lidí, ale jde jim skutečně o to udělat ten nejlepší produkt v oblasti, který má řešit skutečný problém a zapadá do jejich mise. We've been through hot, cold, snow, rain. We've been putting this thing through all its paces in the lab as well as in the real world. You know, the simulation team has been doing an incredible job of being able to scale all of that you know, in the uh, virtual side. And the other thing is that we're going to take these and we're going to put our money where our mouth is. And we're going to put these on into our own fleet, into our own supply chain. And we're going to use this to transport goods between our factories and our suppliers because we believe in it, not just from a mission perspective and a cost perspective, but because we want to close that feedback loop. We got to get that learning as fast as we can. We want it straight from the drivers, we want it straight from the service techs that are working on it. We're going to take all that data that's coming in and continue to refine the product to make it better just like we do on the car side. A to je ta super schopnost, tak jsme mluvili v minulém videu, kdy Elon Musk je extrémně zaměřený na to, jak kvalitní produkt to je, jak se v tom produktu bude někdo cítit, kdo ho bude používat a jak ten zážitek udělat i ještě lepší. We're using the Pavno wrap sleeve, so essentially we're using the the the, the plaid uh, Model S Model X uh, powertrain uh, and um, but it we're, we're And, and, and actually enabling the two of the drive units to actually disconnect uh, yeah. so that they're not uh, free spinning. Uh, so yeah. the efficiency is actually much greater in cruise. Yeah, this is really unique. I mean, we're going with a tri-motor system. One of them is constantly engaged, so that's for maximum efficiency. You're getting on a highway, that's doing the bulk of the work, and it's operating at the peak efficiency point of the entire drivetrain. And then the other two units are for torque and acceleration. So when the driver needs it to get their job done, whether that's you know, getting out of a loading dock or it's on the road they need to pass somebody, you're tackling a grade, you have the torque and power to do it. And the cool thing is that these are clutched automatically, so no driver input needed, but it's also seamless. So the highway efficiency unit is cruising along doing its thing, and if the driver puts their foot to the floor, the torque unit spin up, clutch engages, and takes over, and it does all of that before we've maxed out the torque on the efficiency unit, so it's completely smooth. There's no turbo lag or jerkiness or anything like that. No driver input needed. It's smooth, both in terms of acceleration and deceleration for regen. It's uh, really cool happening all behind the scenes. Um, but you can, you can basically pull 82,000 uh, pounds uh, on, at cruise, 
using, and the only thing that's doing that is a tiny little motor like, on one axle. It's about that big, about a football size maybe. Yeah, yeah you can yeah. carry it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like a, you know, I mean, you, you can check it in your luggage. Good luck that, doing that with a diesel engine. And one of those is more powerful than a diesel. Yeah. Yeah, just that, just that one little guy is, is more powerful than a regular diesel engine on, on, a, on a semi truck. Um, but it's just, I find it like amazing that this enormous thing can be pulled by something that you could carry in your hands. So that, that truck's clocking in at 82. That, that's weighing 82,000 pounds. And when you see that pass shot again, you'll notice, you'll notice that speedometer is climbing. You know, we're going 6% and accelerating up that grade. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is where it comes in. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's, not, it's like driving a, a normal car, not like driving a truck. Um, you, it's just that you're, you're moving 82,000 pounds. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and, a, a, any highway grade you come across, you can tackle at speed. Yeah. You know, there's no compromise. No slowdown. Nope. And the other beauty is that you've got all this power going up, but you also have it going down. And yeah. what that means is you've got regenerative braking. So rather than using a jake brake or an engine braking like a diesel truck does, where you have to worry about hitting your shifts. If you miss a gear, you're onto your brakes and potentially in a runway situation. You don't have to worry about any of that. There's no shifting, no nothing. And so the regen recaptures all that energy as you're going down these grades. But on top of it, it also is a safer system for not just the driver, but everybody on the road because there's no gear to miss. But yeah, standard trip. Down the five, up grapevine, through LA, traffic, construction. You know, we got the bypass on the way station, but you know, running full 80 or just under 82, full deliveries, nothing to hide. Yeah, real, real world, real, real, it's, yeah. Basically. He did take one restroom break for, there, there is a required mandatory 30 minute break within the first eight hours of operation. Okay. Took a small restroom break, but that was it, yep. All right. I mean, the team's done a lot of awesome work. I mean, we, yes. we went into the wind tunnel um, with this really cool model, rolling road, the whole nine yards, and pulled in a lot of learnings and all of our features from the car side that you know, give us such great real world efficiency there. And really want to make sure that the you know, the truck and the trailer have to work together. You know, this is a combination. This is not just the truck. If you optimize one, you actually might disrupt the whole combination. And so we spent a lot of time, both you know, virtually, but also in the wind tunnel to make this happen. And really some next level engineering to uh, of everything they had to do there. And you know, it means that we've got a really efficient truck. Uh, like, with basically no training, you can drive this. Um, you know, you have to think bigger when you're driving it. <laughs> Uh, but it's not like, uh, it's not hard to drive. It's really easy. And we put the center, it put the seat in the center for max visibility, it's low floor, you can stand up in the cabin. Yeah, and that's actually like a really big deal. I mean, and, I mean, you're a tall guy, Elon, like yeah. you're able to stand up just fine. And the you know, nice thing is, is that if you're a truck driver and you're out during the day and it's, you know, it's cold, it's snowy, whatever, you can get in and you, this isn't a sleeper cab, this is a day cab, you can still stand up and you can you know, shed your jacket, put it on the wall, all in the comfort. You can put your coveralls on while in the cab. So if you have to go do a dirty job, you can do that comfortably as opposed to being out in the elements. So that's, you know, that level of space is you know, unheard of. And we were able to do that with some pretty innovative packaging. And on top of it, there's plenty of cargo storage, you know, for drivers that need to bring any tools, other equipment along. And not to mention, you know, we've got the plugins, the wireless charging, everything they need on the uh, electronic side as well. Obviously to charge a, a truck like this quickly, you need a high power charger. So we developed a megawatt class charger as it's capable of charging at a megawatt to DC. Yeah. Um, and it's our next generation immersive cooling. So it's, it's liquid cooled. Uh, so you don't need like a gigantic elephant trunk of a cable. You can actually have a small, small cable and that cable delivers uh, a megawatt. To je všechno moc super, ale takový náklad, jak si bude nabíjet mega dlouho. Akorát, že vůbec. Za 30 minut jste schopni tady s těma V4 mega nabíječkama nabít 70% baterie. I doubt. So the future of transport obviously requires a sustainable energy infrastructure. So you got to have all, all aspects of the, the energy question answered. Uh, sustainable power generation, uh, then you've got to store the power and then you transfer the power to the vehicle. So the, like the three pillars of a sustainable energy future are sustainable power generation uh, with solar and wind. Uh, I'm actually a fan of nuclear. Um, <laughs> which we should support, <laughs> um, and, and uh, geothermal and many others. But things that are sustainable uh, long term, we, we, uh, you, you, but, but things like wind and solar are intermittent. So you have to have the battery pack to store the energy. So when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, you still have energy. And you can also buffer the power so you're not overloading the grid with spike loads. 
Yeah, and our semi customers are actively deploying this today, and you know, we're working with them so that they have the pathway to get towards you know 100 sustainable future. You know, but we have all of this at our disposal. You know, commercial solar and Megapack, and you know the Megapack is great because not only can it do things like peak shaving or some of the other uh, energy modulation, but it also provides a form of redundancy and backup. I mean, if we're going to ask you know, a fleet to take on these trucks and run them, they need to ensure that they're going to be able to charge them and keep their fleet running even in the amount of power outage. And that's one of the things that we can do with the Megapack on site as well. Každý finanční ředitel firmy, která má vlastně nějaký nákladáky, musí být extrémně jasný, že přechod na elektrický nákladáky dává smysl z pohledu peněz. Nejenom, že od roku 2023 dostanete příspěvek 40 tisíc dolarů na nový nákladák elektrický, protože přijde v platnost nový zákon na podporu elektromobility, ale ten nákladák se splatí za necelý 3 až 4 roky jenom na tom, že má levnější náklady na provoz. Jaký finanční ředitel by nechtěl udělat tady tu změnu a přejít? na elektrický nákladáky, které jsou schopný dojet 800 km na jedno nabití. Bude extrémně zajímavé sledovat, jak se Tesla bude snažit zvedat produkci a jak poptávka po tady těch produktech bude čistě z ekonomických důvodů stoupat. <tějí> Nothing like this happens without amazing people and so I just want to thank the people that spent countless hours to make this a reality. That's it. The people. That's it. I I just want to echo. I know a lot of work went into it and this is fantastic. We're thrilled uh, about the delivery today. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for letting us be a part of this. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Lidi z Pepsi vypadají každopádně nadšeně, že jim Elon tráve tady tou nabídkou ušetřil 100 000 dolarů. <laughs> Uvidíme, kdo bude další. Pokud se chcete podívat na celý event, dávám link do popisku. To je dneska všechno. Jestli se vám video líbilo, můžete mi dát like nebo subscribe a uvidíme se u příštího videa. Mějte se, čau.